Hello everyone, Dr. Shane back with you for another pre-lab video, this time for prepar looking at the upper left corner of the chalkboard, preparations and reactions of solutions. I added a couple of little things there. A perfectly acceptable abbreviation for the word reaction uh, is RXN, so RXNS would be reactions. And specifically, we're not just dealing with any solutions today, we are dealing with aqueous solutions, where we are using water as our solvent to dissolve an ionic solute that actually dissolves in water. So that's called a soluble ionic compound, soluble in water. And I'll make reference to that basic hierarchy of matter over there, uh, but part of the pre-lab that you read on the handout is that solutions are a synonym for homogeneous mixtures. And we'll just briefly review that vocabulary. Uh, in the middle is a sample calculation that I'm going to show you so it's easier to see the equipment when it's bigger. And uh, so we'll do that one together. So this is a simulation of seawater, a very rough simulation using only sodium chloride or NaCl. There's more salts, uh, ionic compounds dissolved in uh, ocean water than just NaCl. But that's just, uh, just for a calculation. So moving over to the right side of the board, make sure you do the pre-lab and the quiz and upload all that good stuff to D2L. And as soon as you come in to lab, begin to prepare the what's called copper sulfate pentahydrate solution, and there's a subscript, I don't know if you can really read it, the subscript is AQ for aqueous, because we're dissolving in the water, as described in the first, oh, I don't think I put a T there, yeah, I misspelled that, FERS, in the FERS paragraph, that's the uh, symbol for paragraph of the procedure. Okay, uh, before I come out uh, and begin, I want to show you the two key pieces of equipment here. They are incredibly precise ways of measuring volume at a pretty high level though, not, not really small volumes, but for preparing solutions, and these are really essential. Uh, one of the things we need to have you take away from first semester Gen Chem Lab, because you'll do this in a lot of your classes. So I'm just gonna hold on here for a second. <clears throat> I don't know which one of these is gonna show up better. Uh, <laughs> so this is a thousand milliliter volumetric flask, and it's actually uh, a little bit more than that. You can see the TC, what's on there, that means to contain at 20 degrees Celsius. So temperature matters, right? If, uh, if this room was really hot, uh, that might that might have an effect on the density. So we have to make sure we pay attention to that, that this was made to hold a thousand milliliters, actually a thousand point zero zero six sig figs. And TC means to contain, so not to deliver or dump out, but once we make it, it's a thousand milliliters. The thing I want to point out, I don't know if you can see that, yeah, you can, that etched glass line. Eventually, we're gonna want the bottom of the meniscus of the water to be right on that line, not below, not above, directly on that line. Uh, this is the size you're gonna use. A, oh, can you read that? Yeah, there we go. Whoa, okay, that's great. A 25 milliliter volumetric flask. Again, 25.004 sig figs. Very important. And this is also a TC, may, uh, excuse me, to contain. And here's the etched line in this case. So we're going to want to put the bottom of the meniscus right. That's just going to be kind of hard to see uh, when I get out from behind the camera. Okay? So um, let me come out in front if you want to take some time. The sample aqueous solution problem, I'm just going to have the data for that, and that'll be part of your pre lab. Uh, one of the pre-lab questions to do some calculations on that concentration and density, which are in the pre-lab. Okay, so uh, let's get started. All right, so before I put on goggles and maybe some gloves too, it might not be a bad idea. None of this stuff is hazardous. There, there are a couple of things you're using in the second part where you uh, split your solution into test tubes and add that there's a couple things to be concerned about. Ammonium hydroxide, I think, is the main one. We have some acids and bases uh, in that second part of the experiment. I'm not going to talk too much about that because that's the you're making some observations there. So you'll take some of your solution and add different things to it, and write down what happens, and then we'll talk about waste disposal and stuff. But let's 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 uh, let's go ahead and start. Okay, so just to review some vocabulary, you know that. When we talk about the physical world, we call anything that has mass and takes up space matter. This is middle school physical science. If something is has one thing, it's pure, either it's an element, periodic table of the elements. I don't think I have any elements up here. I don't think 
there's anything up here that's pure. Let me, let me just take a look. I don't think so. Uh, pure stuff is actually kind of hard to come by. Uh, some good examples are pre-1982 pennies are pretty much pure copper, assuming they're perfectly clean. Uh, aluminum foil is aluminum. Gold is gold. Actually, my ring has some gold in it, but it's a mixture. Actually, this would be a solid uh, homogeneous mixture of some other metals. I'm not sure all what's in there. Um, okay, well, anyway, periodic table of the elements, and that's something we'll talk more about in class. Uh, when you take two or more elements and combine them together, we get a molecule or a compound, and man, we have a ton of examples there. So sodium chloride is a compound, and I have our giant container of sodium chloride here. It's just table salt, but very pure form. Actually, what you buy at the store is very pure, especially if you buy non-iodized uh, or kosher salt, as it's called. And the molecule you're going to be dealing with today, it's kind of not exactly a molecule, I guess, depending on how your instructor wants to talk about it. It's copper sulfate pentahydrate, which has this formula. The pentahydrate means that there are, for every formula of CuSO4 molecule, I suppose if your instructor will call it that, there are five water molecules trapped inside the crystals. And that's important for the mass, but we'll get to that. And you'll actually be given little containers of it. But that, that's, so what I have is lab stuff over here, demo stuff here to kind of show you what's going on. So what I'd like to do is to demonstrate how to prepare a solution and in all likelihood I'm going to do some really bad examples of stuff you don't want to do in the lab just to kind of make the point. It's dangerous and you won't get the answers. Well, not, not, it's not dangerous with this stuff, but uh, it's sloppy work. So I'm going to show you some examples. Uh, okay, so here we go. Uh, right before coming in to make this video, I just typed into Google because I didn't remember, is what's the concentration, it's a key word, what is the concentration of sodium chloride in seawater approximately? And for this example, it's fine. So when you like searched for that on the search engine, and I got lots of different answers. One of the answers says it's approximately 3.5% salts, which we are assuming is pure sodium chloride, but dissolved in water, that's a homogeneous, okay, homogeneous solution. Um, percentages are different ways of, there's different ways to do that. This is called a mass to volume percent. Another way of expressing that, that's called 35 parts per thousand PPT. Practically speaking, that means that uh, for every thousand milliliters, of total solution, not water, total solution, although that's, okay, we'll get to that. Total solution, there are approximately 35 grams of sodium chloride. So say, say you're doing an experiment where you need simulated seawater, or you're, I don't know, you have a seawater tank at home, and you have to make a saltwater solution for the saltwater fish. I don't, I don't know if you actually do that, if you have a saltwater tank, I don't know anything about that. But let's assume you have to make that solution. Okay, so, I'm going to need some space for calculations later. Actually, just space so you can set it up in your pre-lab. And I'm going to demonstrate this. So I'm going to keep walking back to the electronic balances and back. I'm using a less precise balance that's up here. Uh, this only goes to two decimal places. It's not as good, but for the purposes here, that's fine. And uh, so you're going to get more sig figs in lab than you are here. So uh, I better goggle up now. And for the sake of lab today, just so you see it, we do have nitrile non-allergenic gloves. So if you want to wear gloves, that's a good idea. Probably used to wearing gloves a lot, especially if you have any cuts or abrasions on your hands. I don't today. But it's a good idea to have gloves on. All right, so how do you make a solution? Now, normally when we make a solution, we don't really care what this weighs. We just want to put the mass that we want in here, dissolve it, get the meniscus up there, and you're done. But for this particular lab, we're doing a, we're doing a little bit more than that. So we actually we need the mass of this uh, empty, oops, let me hit the tear button. Uh, there we go. I think this will work. Ah, oh, this is too heavy. That's okay. 
So I guess I will have to come out and uh, measure this real quick. And actually, you know what? Since this is a simulated lab, we're going to go with it. When you, when you record the mass of your 25 mil ball flask, uh, you'll, get, you'll get something that's, that's really easy. Okay? All right, that's fine. So I'm just going to make this up. Let's just assume that. For the sake of argument here, it's fine. So the mass of the empty ball flies, that's actually probably not a bad estimation. Okay, then the next thing you're going to do in your lab, and I'm just kind of looking at the procedure and doing a larger version of that. Okay, okay, and... Uh, okay, fine. Uh, so now we need 35 grams of sodium chloride. All right. Now, we're obviously not going to measure the sodium chloride directly into here for a couple of reasons. Well, this demo that I'm doing, which is kind of dumb because it doesn't weigh enough on here, is it's hard to get the solid down here without spilling it all over the place. Can you imagine trying to weigh directly into this? That would be silly. So there's a couple challenges here, though. So we need to weigh out a mass, and you're going to do half a gram of, of copper sulf, copper to sulfate pentahydrate. Here we're going to do 35 grams. So what you'll do is uh, you'll go back to the balance room rather than use this one. So but I'm just going to demonstrate it. It's basically the same idea. So we'll take a container, a weighing boat, or a beaker, or something like that. Your instructor will give you some more detail there. Different people have different nuances of how they prepare solutions. So in this case, I want to get about 35 grams of sodium chloride. Awesome. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to put my empty container on there. In this case, I don't really care what this weighs, unlike this one. This one, I really don't care. So I'm going to hit the zero button. Now we're ready to go. So this illustrates point number one. You never weigh a solid directly onto the pan. That should be obvious. You always want to weigh it into something. Sometimes you'll weigh it into an empty beaker, which I think you'll probably do with the copper sulfate pentahydrate. Sometimes you'll use, it's essentially a piece of wax paper that we have up here, a whole bunch of pieces of this cut, called weighing paper. This is really good because it doesn't have any static electricity associated with it, so little particles don't stick to it. They slide right off, which is exactly what you want. You don't want to have any of this left behind. This is actually really good stuff, but it's, it's a little unwieldy to handle. But it's also really cheap, and these things work quite well. You can even sort of bend up the corners and make a little boat out of it. Your instructor can show you a little bit more about that. Or what we do is we use a weighing boat, which essentially is a little bit more sophisticated version. Okay, so that's zeroed, and we want 35 grams, which is a lot. But at least I can make the point here, and you would never do it this way in a lab. This is too big of a container. To, it's not really that safe to maneuver a container this big. Uh, so we would take some of this and put it into a much smaller container first, but it's sodium chloride, and I can make the point, you guys are going to be here, so I'll be using smaller vials like this. Again, it's, it's sodium chloride, if I make a little bit of a mess, it's actually good, because it'll show you exactly what not to do. So, when you go back to the balance, oh, sorry, not to the balance room, you guys are using the balances here. What you'll have is those glass doors that are all over the place. Well, you're going to want to slide the glass doors and scoop out from here. And I'll demonstrate that later. What you don't want to do is take the top off and treat this like a kitchen spice <laughs> and tap out what you need. Because what can happen is if it's a little clumpy, a little high gross scopic, the water has absorbed, it can come dumping out that way. So you want to use a spatula, which I'll show you. When we're dealing with large amounts of solid, in a large container, this is called a scupula. In your lab drawers, you have a spatula. So the spatula has the flat, the scupula has the, uh, well, scoop. So 
by making this harder than it needs to be. So I'm just going to measure out about 35 grams. And if I, if I make a mess, just don't do that. The scoop actually works pretty well. And 35 grams is a lot. Actually, I can just give you a little public service announcement here. If you like soda, a can of soda will have definitely more than 30 grams of sucrose. Now, it's not salt, obviously, but it kind of looks the same. So, see, you can get an idea. And for this, it doesn't really, I'm not, I'm not worried about. And again, I'm just making up some data. Okay, that works. 35.70. Okay, mass of sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is a solid. Yep, it's a solid. Equals uh, 35.71 grams. I want to point out, when you measure the copper sulfate pentahydrate and it says, what is it, 0.5 grams, you don't write down 0.5 grams, you write down all four decimal places. You should get four sig figs on this mass. I'm getting four sig figs on this mass just because it's a big mass. That's the only reason. So again, it's because I'm using this scale. Okay, fine. Now we are good to go. Uh, all right, um, what else do we need to do? All right, uh, we need to get this solid. I don't know if you can really see that. That's about 35 grams, actually, of really any solid powder. So imagine if that was sugar in one can of soda. Ooh, that's a lot of sugar. So we have to get this in, in, in here. Okay. Now, every instructor has a different way. How do you get all of this solid? And there's little bits of the salt on the sides. You want to get every grain of that into here. That's not easy to do. So I'll let your instructor kind of show you how to do There's a couple different ways. Now, in this case, I have a big lump of sodium chloride, which I'm going to kind of chop up a little bit. And I actually just noticed uh, a grain of sodium chloride fell out on the bench when I did that. I would want to write that down in my lab notebook because that mass that I wrote down is not going to end up all in there. That's a source of error. I think we just had the fume lids go off. <laughs> Sorry about that. I may go over and try to deal with that. A couple different ways of getting a solid into here. If you have a weighing boat, you can kind of bring the ends together and carefully pour into here. This probably won't work well with the copper sulfate pentahydrate. And I'll show you another way you can do that. For this, I think we can do it. But let's see. That worked um, pretty well. Also, make sure this is clean and dry. If it's all wet at the top and wet down here, all that solid will cling to the side. Uh, and we don't really want that. Okay, now there's some residue left in here. I want to get that in here, but how do, how do I do it? I don't want to just shake it out. Well, one thing we can do, and I'm sorry, I'm not ready for this part, is use your wash bottle, which of course I don't have ready. My bad. everything large scale. I just took a large DI bottle. Uh, just, just take your wash. We'll make sure you clean this out for the first week. Again, your instructor may give you, may not want you to do it this way. It is, you can then rinse sodium chloride and dissolve it. Okay, I think for the purposes of a demo, that's fine and dissolve it and rinse it all down. You can even rinse down the sides of the volumetric flask. OK, 
Okay, good. So every solid particle now has been washed, if you will, down to the bottom. Awesome. Now there's not enough water in there to dissolve all that salt. So it's, it's, a, it's a saturated solution at this point. It's not going to dissolve anything more. So we need to add a bunch of water in there. Okay, now this is a big container. Um, I don't think you'd do it this way, but uh, you wouldn't have to. I could take it right to the uh, deionized water, but that'll gush the water out. I think usually what I do is I put some deionized water into a beaker and then pour it in with a smaller solution, just use a smaller beaker. And I'm just going to kind of slop this together to make the point. So you want deionized water. Now, we have those plastic jugs that are out there. This is deionized water coming out of here. Oh, incidentally, it looks like we're doing a lot today. We're not really doing that much. So again, deionized water. Make sure everything's clean. Again, I'm kind of slopping this together. Is beakers are meant to be good, good for pouring, so you always pour out of a beaker. And I spilled a little water on the outside. That's okay, because there's no salt there. So if a little water comes on the outside, that's okay. There's no salt there. Just take a big towel. Now, um, I also want to point out, you don't just take the water and put the meniscus right up on here directly. You want to dissolve all of the solids. So typically what you do is fill it up maybe about halfway, maybe I'll put some more in there. Oh man, don't do that. That was really sloppy. And it's better if I tilt it. I'm not even using my own guidelines. So a lot of bad examples here today. Okay, so that's maybe about halfway. And then you want to swirl it until you dissolve all of the solid that's down there. So you, you can hold it up in the air and swirl it like this. A smaller volumetric flask actually works really well. If you put it on the bench and swirl it around, it's just a little easier. You can, you can hold this up and swirl it. If you put it on the bench and swirl it around, it works pretty well. Okay, I don't think we're gonna wait for every little bit of that to dissolve just for the purposes of the demonstration. So that looks pretty good. Again, demo, it's fine. Add water until the meniscus is right here. This one's pretty easy, because this neck is really big. To control the meniscus is pretty easy. The smaller volumetric flask, boy, that water shoots up the neck really quickly. And think about this. If you overshoot the meniscus, is that OK? Can I just pour some out? Okay, so I ran out of water, and I'm gonna again. I'm gonna be a little sloppy here. I would just go get more deionized water. I just having you sit here and stare at me and fill this up is not not useful. Okay, when the water gets towards that neck, just be cautious. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, air bubbles can be a little bit of a pain, so you can tap to get the air bubbles out. And again, you want the meniscus to be, and you can't see it probably from there, but I showed it to you before. The bottom of the meniscus right on the edge line, and I'm just going to kind of use my um, wash bottle to finish it off. And be a, be a lot more cautious than I am. Okay, so there we go. And that's actually pretty good. The meniscus is right there. Good. in this instrument, a volumetric flask, is the precision is more than a thousand. Actually, if I just wrote down one thousand without a decimal, that'd be one sink big. That's ridiculous. This actually has two decimal place precision. So this has uh, six sink figs in this instrument's uh, um, precision, which is pretty darn good. Okay, I almost said a word I regret. Okay. Now, uh, I'm going to have to make this up because I, I want to weigh this, but it's way too heavy for this scale, for this electronic balance. I'm just going to use the fact that uh, a gram of water is 
is about the same thing as a milliliter of water because the density of water is about one, okay? Uh, so I just want to add, oh, let's see, and we put in 35 grams, okay? Again, for this problem, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to say, let's call it, oh, let me think about that for a second. So let's add 1,000 to 1,250. Let's say that it is uh, 1,457.19 grams. I, I, I have no idea if that's going to give an answer that's anywhere close to that. I don't, I don't really care, okay? It's just, just, for, just for argument's sake. So we, we added about a thousand milliliters, right? So we got to at least add a thousand, then we put in some sodium chloride. Maybe I dumped a bunch out, so it's not close. So that, that's fine. That's fine. That, that, that'll give us a set of data to do some calculations. Okay, uh, this video is probably getting a little bit too long. So that's how you make a solution. And uh, one thing I want to show you over with the smaller amounts, a couple little nuances here. And I'm not going to bother. The procedure tells you to get half a gram, so 0.5 grams. Just get that, write it down to four sig figs. Don't, don't bother with that. I'm just going to make this up because I don't want to keep taking too much time. So when you go to the analytical balance, make sure all the doors are closed. Turn it on. Put your container in. Actually, I'm going to show you something a little different. This may actually help. Again, follow your instructor's procedures. 0.5 grams is really small. And another way of making a solution is to dissolve it in a secondary container and then pour it into the ball flask, assuming you're not going to go more than 25. Let's just try that. So I'm going to put this on here. I'm going to re-zero it. And I just want half a gram. Now I'm going to simulate this. When you use the electronic balance, open up both side doors and Reach in one side with your spatula, the other side with the container. Maybe make sure this is nice and uh, dry so it's easy to handle. Don't try to go in from one side or go in the top, go in both sides. And then I hit the zero button. That's good because I don't care what the beaker weighs in this case. And yeah, let me at least get somewhat close to half a gram just so you can see what it looks like. Okay, that's 0.48 grams. Of course, you would write down on those balances 0.4821 or whatever. Okay. Uh, whenever you're not using a container or a reagent, put the cap back on always. If I did that with the sodium chloride instinctively, that's good. So you've got your mass. I'm not writing all this down, by the way. But this is just for procedure. Now, you can, if you weigh this in a nice dry container and you want to try to pour it in here, you can do that. That's fine if it works. If you did this on a piece of weighing paper, you can kind of curl up the paper without having it fly all over the place. You can pour it in there. By the way, this stuff is really safe. Uh, we're still wearing goggles and PPE and everything. But if you make a mistake and you spill it, start over. It's okay. This is learning how to prepare solutions. This is a very important uh, skill lab, not a huge calculation lab. So just start over. It's okay. You just clean it up. You move on. No problem. As long as you don't just ignore it. Okay. So again. If you want to make this solution, you can dissolve it first and then pour it in there and then rinse this container out. So just to make the point, put that in there. Beakers are not really good for swirling around. They tend to splash. So grab a glass stirring rod and swish that around. I'm not going to sit here and have you do this. Another option, which we didn't show you, we could put your magnetic stir bar in there and then use the magnetic stir. Then we have the stir bar to be concerned with. So, so I'm just going to pretend that that's done. This, that, this is a complete simulation. You can even rinse off your stirring rod to make sure that every little bit of that solid is going to go into that glass. Okay, again, this is not all dissolved, but you get the idea. So using a be small beaker, Get 
every drop. Good, I'm way below 25, so I'm in good shape. I'm gonna rinse this out. I can even rinse it out more than once now, I can swirl it a little bit again. You have to follow your instructor, because they may be watching this going, please, Dr. Shane, don't tell them to do it that way. Okay, so let's assume it's all dissolved. In this case, it has not. This is a really bad example. There's some solid in there. This would not be an accurate solution at all. This would be a terrible solution. So make sure you dissolve all of your solid. Let's assume it's all dissolved in here. Again, if you, if you put the solid in here directly, fill it about halfway, kind of like it is now, and swirl it to get it all dissolved. Now you want to get the meniscus right here. This is tricky. Okay. So you can use the wash bottle to top it off. Or, uh, do I already have one of these now? I do. Or you can grab a glass pipette in your pipette bowl that you have and add water drop by drop until it gets to the top. So you can take some, I think I still have some water here, don't I? Um, any so, so just deionize water and add drop by a drop. And let me just do a bad example. I don't know if you can see this. So the meniscus is below the line. And say I'm just in a hurry and I want to get out of the lab, which you don't want to do. Take time. And I go, ah, uh, and I shoot. Here's the line. Here's the etched line. And I just went way past it. Would it be a legitimate move for me to dump that out? To say, oh, I just shot it over. I'm just going to dump it out. Or I'm going to use my pipette and pull that out. until No, you can't do that. Because now you've removed some of the solid that you made up. That would not work. And I'm showing that example. Uh, another thing you're going to want today is a waste beaker. You probably keep a waste beaker at the back of your bench so you don't keep walking back and forth to the two waste stations. So here's some waste that I have. You pull out a big beaker. I'm just going to reuse this one and put it in there as your waste so you're not moving around too much. Okay. So this solution is not perfect. The meniscus is above the line. You want to make sure you put yours exactly on the line. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get to this. A cool piece of equipment we have in the lab is called parafilm. We always keep it over here. And we'll cut some small pieces for you like this. This piece is actually a little bit too big for what we want. Parafilm is, um, well, it's paraffin and it has a film to it, surprising. It's, it's kind of like uh, a really glorified saran wrap. And I'm just gonna cut it in half because this should be enough just to show you. Uh, we don't have corks or caps for these, but parafilm, if you hold it like that and twist it around, it forms a seal. I didn't do that very well. Make sure there's no holes in it, like you didn't tear it. And that actually forms a really good seal. Okay, this is a bad solution. This is not a good solution. Okay, the last thing I'll, I'll say before we do the sample calculation, I'm just going to set up the sample calculation. You can do it as a pre-lab and check your answer with your instructor, okay? Is when you finish the first part of the experiment, you're going to take some of this solution and distribute it to four different test tubes. Uh, you can pour out of a volumetric flask but it's not, sometimes not easy, and I'll show you why. And I'm not sure it's gonna happen here. So get a clean, dry beaker, of course, okay. The, these are not really good for pouring. Beakers are good for pouring, like say, distributing it evenly. So what you wanna do is pour some of this into a second, and then go to your test tubes. Pouring out of here can sometimes get messy, and it didn't actually happen, I was hoping that it would, is sometimes, the uh, hydrogen bonding in the water is so strong, especially in this narrow flask, that the water doesn't come out right away. You have to tap it to break the surface tension, but then the water comes rushing out. So if you need to, tap it, and then, then distribute it into your test tubes. Okay, um, I'm gonna leave all this stuff on while I do the calculation. So I just wanna look at the procedure. Yep. Yeah, the solutions, you're doing four test tubes in the second part of the experiment, and you're adding drops of other chemicals, acids and bases primarily, and making observations. I'm actually not gonna do that part for you. 
So <laughs> believe it or not, I just did the first paragraph. Eesh. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is back up and talk about calculations. Um, I think I'll leave that there. The introduction to the experiment shows you two calculations. I think we can go through these. So concentration, there's different ways of doing concentration. There's different ways of doing it. In this case, we're going to take the mass of your solute divided by the total volume of solution. This is not exactly the way it's shown in the lab. But concentration is a measure of amount of solute per, per volume of solution. So solute and solvent combined. So water and the solids. So it's a solution volume. And the units we'll use there are, well, we'll just keep it simple, grams for the solute and milliliters here. Eventually, especially those of you that have had chemistry before, the unit we will put in the numerator instead of mass, we'll use moles. It'll be moles per well, and we'll also use liters instead. So moles per liter, that's a unit called molarity. But we're not quite there yet at this point. So that's one calculation. But then you have the density. So this is the concentration of a solution. And the density of a solution is the mass of the solution, a whole solution combined, divided by the volume of the solution. So the denominator is the same, right? Yeah, concentration and density, the denominator is the same. Volume of total solution in mills mass of the solution in grams, and you're just doing those two calculations, and I think you have the data, don't you? I think you can do this one. The mass of the solute, yep, divided by the total volume of solution, okay. That's easy, isn't it? That's just the one. Okay, but make sure you do it with sig figs. So this divided by this, do it with sig figs are important. And if scientific notation is appropriate, do it with scientific notation. Then the density of the solution is the mass of the whole solution. Well, you can get the mass of the solution from this data, because you know the empty flask. Okay, you know that. And the vault, okay. So you can do that calculation. So part of your pre-lab, take these data and calculate the concentration, the density, and understand that these are not the same. That is a very important point. Okay, uh, I think that's it for the video. One last lesson before I tell So when you show up the lab, have your lab notebook set up, I think you're good to go. It's a pretty straightforward activity, but preparing solutions is vital. And last little tip, you take off gloves, take off one, take off the other inside out so you never touch the exterior surface and dispose. And we are out, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good day, have a good lab.